Do we you start? Guys are good to go. Okay. You guys I told them to go back to the field. How long do you talk for? Okay. Like, there's a schedule. Like, so when the when does when does the video start? Nine thirty one. Yeah. So, so it's nine thirty. So we talk for a minute. You, you don't even need to. Right? Okay. You just leave it that All right. Any special preparations for the 99th? No. <laughs> uh, these games are one game at a time. As a matter of fact, these games are one game of a season. You know, we talk about having three seasons. We talk about having the regular season, which we won. We are first place in our division. We talk about having the championship season, which we're in on Saturday. And then on Thursday, we talk about the Thanksgiving season. Um, in regard to this being the 99th versus the 100th, no. The status quo, nothing different, one at a time. Um, the one thing that's different is we're home this year, uh, and uh, we like uh, being home. We travel, we travel well. Uh, Fordham's fans don't travel as well. So to have us in our backyard, uh, we're pretty happy about the 99th being at our place. Uh, but nothing special in regard to the 99th versus the 100th, one at a time. I'm definitely worried about this year. There's no doubt about that. So the 99th... Um we have a team this year that has played a very tough schedule. Uh, we're definitely senior-oriented. Um, we were sitting in film on Monday watching uh, Xavier this year and last year's Xavier tape. And I did say to the seniors, and I apologize that uh, I'm going to say this, but you know, for the underclassmen, next year is the 100th year. Uh, it's going to be a, a huge production, and game's going to take a... A different turn probably next year in terms of maybe where it's held and the crowd and alum et cetera, so on um but again not thinking ahead uh we definitely want to make sure we send our seniors out on thursday during the 99th the right way but you can always hear the rumblings in the background about the the hundredth coming down the pike okay yeah oftentimes we like to order the darkness wind and rain package uh we get no darkness on thanksgiving unfortunately a wind and rain is always an asset um Fordham throws the ball well, you know. We are the leading rushing team in the entire CHSFL. Uh, we rush the ball for 336 yards per game. Uh, we have a three-headed monster, two back, full back, and wing back, and all of them are dangerous. Fordham is probably the most balanced team in the league. I think they're 1,300 some odd yards passing and rushing, and 1,300 some odd yards, you know, uh, passing and rushing. So they are 50-50. We are going to ground and pound. That's the way the game is every year. You know, 2019, we scored 40 points. Last year, uh, you know, we lost by 13. So uh, it's, it's just the immortal struggle. And uh, we're coming to the table the same way we always do. And Fordham's coming to the table the same way they always do. It should be a great game. I've been, uh, I've been checking the weather pretty consistently. Um, the one thing I have to say we have come first this year, it's probably our best running attack we've had in my five years now as uh, the head coach. Um, we're very gifted up front. I, we have an O-line that's been together pretty much the whole year. Uh, they're working real well together. We have a stable of running backs led by Charlie English, um, our captain, um, who's had a great year. So if it was windy, we were gonna be okay. If it was wet, we were gonna be okay. But I know that weather definitely plays into Coach Stevens and uh, Xavier's hands more than it does ours. Um, we like 55 and sunny more than you could ever imagine. Uh, I think we're a very well-balanced attack. Um, and if you allow us to throw it to complement our running game, you know, we're a tough team to handle at times. But you got to <laughs> – I do have a nice smile on my face. Uh, the weather's going to cooperate. It usually doesn't out there. Um, I know Chris prays long and hard for uh, that one day a year. And it's tough when two Jesuit guys are praying for this different things, you know, who wins that battle. I think we might get it this year. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have three different guys uh, addressing you during the game. Uh, Robert Batista, 
Uh, he plays three guard for us, which is our, our weak side guard. Uh, he's very versatile, you know. Uh, last year we had an injury. We moved him from three guard to defensive line where he was good on both sides of the ball. This year he's back to three guard. Traditionally the three guard is my favorite position. He's the undersized guy with a lot of moxie. Uh, if he's got decent wheels, he can lend an extra body to the power sweep that we have. Um, he is a fun dude to have a practice. Everything that he's doing is the best. You know, easily motivation, e easily motivated. Uh, so anytime I give a speech, you know, he's moved, you know. Um, so he's a lot of fun to have uh, on the team. Uh, Gavin Gallagher, he plays wing back for us. He's a returning starter at wing. And boy, has he come a long way. I, I think the wing back spot for us is probably one of the toughest jobs because you have variable edges. And he needs to understand how to block the edge, be physical enough to do it. Uh, but he also needs to be our great counterpuncher off the weak side. And I tell you what, he has at least a half a dozen 85-yard runs this year. Uh, he is a great counterpuncher. He's really grown up. Um, his dad, Brendan Gallagher, I think might have been the MVP of the 1986 game. Uh, so it's a, it's a legacy uh, to have him back with us. Uh, and he understands that legacy. Uh, and so we're expecting great things out of him during the game. And the last uh, guy is Jamie Franchock. Jamie Franchock, he plays rover safety for us, which is probably one of the most complicated positions we have on defense. Uh, if they have two backs in the backfield, he drops down. He's got to be physical on the edge. If they have one back in the backfield, he drops back, and he is a deep half defender. Uh, and there is a lot on his plate. He is the one returning starter we have in the secondary from last year. And playing the most complicated position, that's an asset for us. Uh, great kid with a real positive attitude. Um, you know, we're hoping he's able to bring the young ones, you know, up to snuff as we defend a, a pretty formidable Fordham pass game. Uh, a couple of guys are coming on to speak. Uh, we got Josiah Moore. Um, he's like the general of our team. He's the guy that you, you follow into battle. Um, he's uh, one of our toughest players, obviously, on the field. Um, he plays outside linebacker. But if you get to meet him um, off the field, uh, you can see why people gravitate towards him. He's funny. He's polite. He's, uh, he's intelligent. Um, he's witty. And just a respectful young man. But then when you see him on the field, and people see it a lot, I mean, he's a guy who is amped up. He's the guy in your face. He's the guy clapping. He's the guy who's going to come in and lay the wood on you if you have the ball. Uh, he's the guy we follow into battle. Like I said, uh, I also had the pleasure of teaching him in class and uh, nothing short of spectacular in class as well. You know, does everything you ask of him on and off the field. Uh, very good writer. Uh, very creative in his work. And uh, going to miss him. Um, we also have Tommy Guys who spends a, a lot of time with me during the school day. During his freeze and lunch, he'll stop in the office and not just chatting about football, but chatting about other things. Uh, great golfer, so we talk a lot about golf. I thought we got to get me some lessons or some pointers. Um, another gentleman who has a great GPA. It's over a 4-1 this uh, quarter for the first quarter of senior year. He's looking to head down south, maybe to Florida, which is be his first choice. Uh, I think Georgia's also in the mix. But uh, on the field, Tommy Guy's been a two-year captain for us. He's the guy we rely on in the huddle. He's the guy we rely on during practices. He, quite honestly, might be the smartest guy in the field for us. He knows everything that we have to do offensively. He knows everybody's job, uh, reads defenses very well. And uh, last but not least is uh, Charlie English, uh, another gentleman who's excelled in the classroom. He's going to head up to Middlebury uh, to continue his football career. And quite honestly, probably going to play lacrosse up there as well. I think he's going to be a college two-sport athlete. Um, another two-year captain, um, also the captain of the lacrosse team as well. Um, he is a special player. He's a two-way player. Um, he's the guy who calls our defense. Um, he's the guy who gets people in the right position. He's a guy we want to see in a big spot, in a big play. A uh, big pass play, big run play, him filling the alleys. Uh, he's a guy we want around the ball. That's where the confidence come in, comes in for him. Um, offensively, he is uh, one of the best running backs I've seen here, and I'm here since 1998. Uh, hands down, one of the best running backs we've ever had here at Fordham Prep.
Robert Arteca Batista, number 56, offensive guard, senior. Josiah Moore, senior, 25, outside linebacker. Hi, my name is Gavin Gallagher. I'm a senior. Uh, my number is 41, and I'm a running back. Hi, I'm Tommy Guys. I'm a senior here at Fordham Prep, and I am a wide receiver, and I wear number 15. Jamie Franchock, senior, number 38, outside linebacker. Charlie English, class of 2023, number 22. I play running back and free safety. The first turkey ball I saw, I was watching my older brother play in the game. And I remember it was very windy. And just seeing the intensity at the varsity level compared to the freshman level I was playing at, it was a difference. The guys looked huge. And it was just a rough physical game out there. First turkey ball I saw was my freshman year, which was the 2019 game. And it was a really cool experience. I I believe we ended up losing that game, but it was still a, a cool experience to kind of see like the proper playing of the game that you always hear about. Like the Turkey Bowl is always talked about here at Fordham, and it was really cool to kind of see it in action. And it's just a really honor to, to play in it for my second year. Uh, I remember the first Turkey Bowl. I remember that Thanksgiving. I was a freshman. Uh, I remember growing up with the guys that were seniors that year. And I remember looking up to them and seeing them how they played that game. It was a great game. I don't remember the exact score, but I remember they won by a lot, Xavier. Uh, it was really fun watching them crush Fordham, and I hope we do the same. Um, the first Turkey Bowl I saw was my brother's, I think his junior year. It's out in Aviator, Matt Vallecci. Xavier had a great team, but they, they overpowered them pretty easily, although it was pretty windy. Uh, it was a great game. Fordham won, I think, two, by two touchdowns. Um, it was an awesome game, super cold, super windy, but what we, kind of what we expect this year, but it was, it was a great game and 4-1. Uh, First Turkey Bowl I saw freshman year, it was a great game at Aviator. Uh, looking up to those guys, always wanted to watch them play, always wanted to be like them. Being on that stage now is really a great achievement. I can't believe I'm here. Uh, watching that game really motivated me to try and be like them. Um, and now that we're here today, uh, get to play Fordham, home, 99th Turkey Bowl. Really looking forward to it. My first Turkey Bowl being last year, I had high expectations. Hearing from everybody else, you know, this is a big thing. 5,000 people, 6,000 people come. And it was really exciting making that be my first one because I was a starter on varsity. The crowd was electric, you know. It was, it was great to watch myself and my teammates make a big play, and then I look over to the crowd and everybody's roaring and congratulating. So it was really, it was a really nice thing to play in. The first Turkey Bowl I played in, we came off a one in seven, one in eight season, so it was pretty rough. But playing in it, we put up a good fight up until, up until the end. Fordham got away with it, but I think we're gonna come back this year. More physical, stronger. We have a lot of returning players from last year, so I think we might get the upper hand. So last year, we uh, ended up beating Xavier in the Turkey Bowl at Fordham, which was really special. It was a good proper send off to the seniors. It was a really cool experience. It's something that I remember every day. It's probably the, definitely the game that I remember most from last year, and I can assume that this year it'll be the game that I remember most. Last year was the first Turkey Bowl I played in. Uh, it was hard because we lost, but this year we're on a roll, and I really believe that we have a chance this year we had the championship game last week, and I believe that with this mentality of winning, how I think we're going to take it this year. Uh, so my two older brothers played in the Turkey Bowl, and my dad, who also went to Xavier, played in the Turkey Bowl. And my whole family went to Xavier, so I'm the last, last one, last Gallagher, my dad calls it, because I'm the last one to take part in the Turkey Bowl, and last one to come through Xavier. Last year was the first Turkey Bowl I played in. Um, my whole family was there, aunts, uncles. First game we played in Coffee Field that year. Thousands of people in the crowd. The energy was awesome. I, I couldn't be more excited to play in it. Um, we executed our game plan really well. Uh, let them have a first touchdown. Offense stormed back. Defense stormed back. We kind of buckled up, and we uh, ended up with a victory. Uh, had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, last year was the first Turkey Bowl we played in. Rough game. We had a rough season last year. Um, but playing on Thanksgiving is awesome. Uh, it's great for all the guys. You get to play one last game together. Uh, tough loss, but we'll come back stronger this year. We got a good championship game. 
that will help us prepare for the game and I think we'll really exceed. Next Thursday, I'm really just looking forward to beating the man in front of me, letting him know that he can't beat me and I'm going to do whatever I want. Looking forward to just being out there one last time with the guys I grew up here with at Xavier, playing on the field, sharing the memories, especially with the coaches. Probably the last ever football game I'll play with this group of guys and the staff, and they taught me so much outside of football. This will be my first time traveling to, uh, to Aviator next Thursday, so I'm really excited to kind of see the, the Xavier side of the Turkey Bowl. I'm very familiar with the Fordham side of it, and it's one of the coolest parts about the tradition is that it's equally our side as, as is theirs. So I'm really excited to hopefully get, a, hopefully get a win on Thursday and be with my family and have a good Thanksgiving after. Uh, I'm mostly looking forward to, uh, sad, but it's our last game with all my friends, my last football game, but I'm like looking forward to finishing out strong and being able to be with like the guys one last time and hopefully taking home the win. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to continue the winning streak kind of with Fordham and, and within my family. I've never been, been part of a turkey bowl that's lost. So, uh, Really excited to keep that up and to kind of dominate that game. Uh, most looking forward to winning on Thanksgiving. Um, one last game with the boys, finishing off my football career. It's a great, way, great way to go out. My final score prediction is 28-7 Fordham. And I think uh, it's going to be, we're going to dominate the game pretty early and, uh, and keep it up. My predictions for Thanksgiving morning, 35-14, Xavier. I think the final score on Thursday will be Fordham Prep 34, Xavier 7. I believe the final score will be 21-13, Xavier. I think they're going to miss a field goal. 35-0, Fordham. I think the final score is going to be... 42-14, Xavier. There's one thing about uh, the game definitely brings out the rivalry, there's no doubt, but uh, I'd consider uh, Coach Stevens to be uh, one of my closest friends, uh, especially in the Jesuit network. Um, we, we talk quite a bit. Uh, we've gotten to know each other quite a bit. Um, we've gone out quite a bit. Uh, we had a couple of times during our convocation, which is uh, when... The Jesuit schools all meet, and the Northeast Convocation uh, a number of years ago was here at Fordham U, and uh, Coach Stevens and I definitely had a good time that night with the band and a couple of cocktails, and we enjoyed each other's company, and we had a lot of laughs, and you know, that's how I picture him. He's a, he's a great guy to hang out with. He's funny, he's intelligent, um, and we're kind of cut from the same cloth. Um, and just the other day, uh, our JV and the Xavier JV were playing a playoff game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our varsity team, we were out in Staten Island that day, so I couldn't uh, attend the JV Xavier playoff game. But uh, Chris was going with his wife, and he asked me uh, about a good place to eat. And, you know, here in the Bronx, we got a lot of good places to eat, but uh, we sent him over to Arthur Avenue, and uh, I think he enjoyed the meal. Uh, I wish I was available, and I would think of my wife, we would have joined them, and uh, I probably would have skipped out on the bill on him. But um, always nice to to see him up in this neck of the woods. But the friendships, uh, it grows a little bit every year as well. We get a little closer. We're both getting older, obviously, and uh, have been through the battles and the wars with these games. And, uh, you know, win or lose, and obviously you want to win. Um, doesn't change the way I feel about Chris and uh, the boys over at Xavier. You know, they're our brothers and they're our Jesuit brothers. And, you know, well, as we say every year, I hope you go 11-1. and one. And he says that to me quite a bit as well. Pat Dean and I, you know, Pat is the head coach at Fordham and a great dude, you know, uh, a lot of fun. So uh, a couple weeks back, I went up to Fordham for the JV playoff game, uh, which we unfortunately lost. Um, but I asked Pat, I'm bringing my wife to the game because we're after the game, we're going to go out to Arthur Avenue. I'd never been to Arthur Avenue before. And so I said, and my wife, my wife is Italian, you know, her mother was Dorothea Vincenza Randazzo. So, you know, it's got to be legit. So I asked Pat, I said, so when you got off the avenue, where do you go? He's like, oh, you got to go to Amelia's. And when you go there, ask for Nick. I said, oh, yeah? If I ask for Nick, am I going to get thrown out? He goes, no, nah, you'll probably get a handshake. 
So after the game, uh, we go and we have a great time. Uh, the advice was spot on, amazing Italian food, uh, great service, great ambiance. And I asked for Nick. Nick comes over, we have a good conversation about Pat and about how much fun Pat is. And he goes, oh, by the way, dessert's on Pat Dean. So thanks, Pat. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't hope that I pay you back by losing on Thanksgiving, but I do appreciate the camaraderie. Go Jesuits. Welcome everyone to Aviator Field for our annual playing of the Turkey Bowl between Florida Prep and Xavier. We would like to start off by first introducing our seniors and their parents and honoring them for all their work and efforts on the playing field as well as off. First, the seniors and their parents for Florida Prep. Number one, Liam Conlin. Number three, Jericho Anchetta. Number six, John Powers. Number eight, Edward Lewis Moore. Number 11, Hayden Padilla. Number 12, Nicholas Tykin. Number 15, Tommy Geis. Number 16, Keegan Duty. Number 22, Charlie English. Number 25, Josiah Moore. Number 33, J.T. Schmiel. Number 42, Coakley Dulce. Number 52, Michael Semifrivo. Number 53, Vaughn Johnson. Number 55, William Messia. Number 56, John Weiss. Number 58, Bruce Williams II. Number 60, Michael Spoler. Number 66, Khalil Adoki. Number 67, Brendan Drew. Number 71, Christopher Ivanov. Number 72, Cornelius Lane. And number 88, Jackson Della Fiore. And now, for the seniors and their parents from Xavier. Number three, Shane Salatoski. Number eight, Aiden Honig. Number 14, Devin Watkins. Number 17, Patrick McCann. Number 22, Sean Donahue. Number 25, Matthew Scariano. Number 28, Robert Allen. Number 29, Charles Kinsey. Number 38, James Franchock. 
Number 41, Gavin Gallagher. Number 45, Anthony DeBow. Number 52, Danny O'Malley. Number 53, Chris O'Halloran Gannon. Number 54, Kyle Knobloch. Number 55, Marquis St. Cyrus. Number 56, Robert Artica Batista. Number 57, Matthew Lane. Number 79, Lewis Freeman. And number 82, Messiah Young. It is the purpose of the Catholic Football League to promote the highest standards of fair play and sportsmanship at all times, keeping in mind the Catholic beliefs of all our member schools. All players, coaches, and spectators will adhere to the code of conduct as put forth in our bylaws. We ask that there be no objectionable or inappropriate cheering at any time. Violators of this code are subject to ejection from our game. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to introduce the 33rd president of Xavier High School, Mr. Jack Reslowski, to lead us in prayer. Please stand, and gentlemen, please remove your hats. Please remain standing after the prayer for the presentation of the colors by the Regimental Color Guard of Xavier's Gold Star Army, JROTC unit, and the singing of our national anthem by Xavier's Navan Paul. Thank you. On behalf of Ms. Kim Smith, Xavier's headmaster, Mr. Brian Carney, president of Fordham Prep, and Dr. Joseph Petriello, principal of Fordham Prep, welcome to the 94th Turkey Bowl and the 99th meeting between the Rams of Fordham Prep and the Knights of Xavier High School. Rivals on the field, yet always united in faith and mission. Please join me in our prayer today. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. During this month of November, the Church pauses to remember all those who have been called from this life to the next. Let us take a moment of silence to remember those who have died, the sons of Xavier, the alumni of Fordham Prep, our veterans, our friends, and family members. We remember in a special way Letitia Wilson, the mother of Xavier senior Ryan Brown, who died this week. May they rest in God's peace, and may we know God's consolation. And so we pray. God of goodness, light, and truth, we ask you to send your spirit upon us this morning and bless all those gathered here. We pray for unity and respect, acknowledging that we are made in your image and likeness. Give us eyes to see your gifts. Give us hands to be of service. Give us hearts to love and care for all. May we always be people of gratitude. We ask your special blessing today on the players, coaches, and officials through their preparation and competition. Maybe if they draw more closely to you. We pray for peace throughout the world. 
in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, and here in the United States, especially in Colorado, Virginia, and North Carolina, recently scarred by violence. We pray for an end to war and violence. May our hearts of stone turn to hearts of flesh through your grace. Watch over all those in the armed services and renew in us all a commitment to a just peace that ensures the dignity of all. We make these prayers through the intercession of the Blessed Mother as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. John the Evangelist, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Ignatius Loyola, pray for us. If I could draw your attention to midfield, we will have the touring course, and today we'll have a ceremonial touring course featuring seven honorary captains from the Xavier Championship football team of 2012.
From the looks of it, it appears Xavier has won the toss and deferred. Once again, happy Thanksgiving to all those listening. 99 years of the Turkey Bowl. It's a privilege to be doing this, the 99th edition. Xavier was a championship team in 2022. Fordham Prep, four and six, not as good, but Fordham Prep was a division above them, so we should expect still an entertaining close game. The run and gun offense of the Xavier Knights will try to tack on their as many points as they can against the aerial attack of Fordham Prep. It's always been the name of the turkey bowl. The ground and pound of Xavier versus the high flying I wouldn't call it West Coast, but modern offense of Fordham Prep. Ten minute delay from the original start time. Benny Roya ready to kick this one off. Looks to his right, then to his left. And we are underway from Brooklyn. Short kick fielded at the 10 yard line, trying to cut back across the field is Charlie English. He'll be tackled around the 30 yard line, maybe a little short. So we'll greet the Fordham Prep offense. Wish we had those Sunday Night Football intros, but don't have the budget for that. He makes it to the 29-yard line. Crazy. English, who was the Fordham leading rusher this season, had four, 11 touchdowns First on the year, 100 yards plus. You can see it there. He had a burst of speed across the field. 46 degrees at kickoff, barely a cloud in the sky. So, much to the chagrin of Mr. Stevens. He prefers the wind, little to no wind today. We get our first look at Matthew Moore. He hands it off to English, straight up the middle. He'll be met at the line, going nowhere. Sean Donahue was pumped up after that tackle. That tough Xavier defense coming in at it again. Donahue and Evan Tarosi. Lost a one yard on the play. It'll be second and eleven. Second and eleven for the Rams at their own twenty. Nearly the same exact formation. This time it's play action. Moorhead comes to the far side of the field. It's caught. Trying to make moves. Not much doing over there. Gain of about three. It'll be third and about seven. Sean Donahue, the double A defensive player of the championship game. Trying to be someone to look out for during this during this 99th annual Turkey Bowl. Edwin Lewis Moore was on the receiving end of that. Third down and about seven. This time Moorhead is running back to his left instead of his right. Trips left. His first read not there. He's got Lewis Moore again. It'll be near the sticks. I believe he's got the first down. He does. Matt Moorhead pass. So Edwin Lewis Moore. Making a name for himself early in this one. He's got two catches. Moorhead, the junior, beat out uh, guys, the senior, got the keys the senior with 1,119 1, yards and a QB rating of 86.4 this season. They keep it in the shotgun. They run it this time to English. English gets a block, and he's able to cut it to the outside. He's got a first down and more. Stiff arming man all the way down to about the 20-yard line. That of almost, that's that power that English shows on the, when he runs the ball. Gain of, gain of almost 40 on the play. So a way of flipping the field. Xavier defense had a great first two plays. Back to back first downs. This one a big one all the way down to the 18 of Xavier. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams at the 18 yard line of Xavier. A 
Motion man. Here's a flip to English again, and it'll get tripped up but still fall forward for a gain of about four. Charlie English with the carry again for the breath. Throughout his season, English had 86, around 86.6 .6 yards per game. We'll see if he can keep up with that this season. Well, he's already got <laughs> about 44 on the opening drive. So if this keeps up, he'll definitely surpass that this game. We'll head a roll right. They'll throw across the field. It's caught. And in the end zone, Edwin Lewis Moore yet again for the touchdown. So they go down the field in six plays and take it and punch it in. What a touchdown by Moorhead. Matthew Moore. All three catches by Edwin Lewis Moore on that drive. It looks like there's a flag on the play. This might be coming back. And it looks like the the, the Xavier fans are screaming, you can't do that. Back him up 10 yards. So that wipes out the touchdown off the board. And we'll see if the Xavier defense can build off of that. But you can see early, Moorhead's been looking the way of Edward Lewis Moore. He's got two catches on this drive already. That was a third, but that gets wiped out by the holding penalty. They still try to pass on second and long. He's going to the far side of the field. He misses man. And it'll be third down and 16. Looking in the direction of Tommy Gies of Rye, New York. Moorhead's first incompletion of the day. Moorhead had five interceptions this year and 10 touchdowns. Two to, good two to one ratio, standard. Third down and 16, they tighten up the receivers on this one. Moorhead will drop back. He's gonna step up. He's making good. sure to stay behind the line. Full switch down, upstairs. Wow, extending the play. That's also Tommy Gies on the receiving end of that touchdown. So a third and 16, extending the play. And the Rams get the touchdown anyway. He's the second highest uh, yards this season for the Rams receiving unit with 318 and two touchdowns. Make that three. Winston Otto on for the PAT. It is up and it is good. Right down the pipe. So 7 nothing Rams after the opening drive. They do it in less than four minutes. 8.36 to play. And we'll see how the Knights respond. Otto's 19th PAT of the season coming off the touchdown from Geitz.
short kick. Fielded by number 15, Sean Coe, and will get tackled at about the tw his own 29 yard line. Sophomore Cole had one, junior Cole, sorry, had 107 yards on the season. We will see how the Knights respond. Most likely a run on the first play. A lot of rods that it isn't. It's Zalatovsky on the first play. He gets a, he gets a great block, and I'll take it for about seven. Zalatovsky, the offensive player of the championship game, and it will probably look like the offensive player of the season for the Xavier Knights. He's had a great year. Many Morales has a great block. He'll be featured in the backfield as well on this. Again, and I'll take it for a first down. Get tackled by some linebackers. Take it to the 42. Medi, the second, the second running back on the depth chart, will probably move up to the first slot next year when he is a senior. Back-to-back -back gains of seven yards have the Knights for the first down at their own 42. Although he already has 12 touchdowns this season, so he will look to improve on that today. Very explosive player. He's got a shift and he got an offsides penalty that'll move him forward five. It appeared. Now the Knights are moving, or the Knights. I thought so, okay. The, Knight, the Knights were moving back, I thought my eyes deceived me. Albi Cornaccio jumping. It'll make it first and five. They get it to Zalatovsky, looking for some blocks. Keeps his legs turning forward. There wasn't much there to begin with. Take it for about a yard. And some extracurricular activities in the secondary. And that'll likely move somebody either back or forward 15 yards. Already two penalties on the ramps today. Surprising turnout for a game with so much importance on the line. Three flags on that play. Must have been egregious. I'm sorry I didn't see it. My eyes were on the actual play. Although this could be offsetting. They are offsetting penalties. The Xavier Faithful not happy. Second down and five, likely another run. It is, it's Gavin Gallagher. Oh, the inside handoff. Gets to the second level and gets a first down. Lost the ball. The Rams say they have it. He might have been down before the play. Is it? He appeared to be down before he lost it. Number 44, James Rice is arguing, but it'll stay Xavier Ball. Gallagher in his final game as a Xavier student had eight touchdowns on the season, four of them over 100 yards. An explosive player again in this backfield. Flags down, movement. Chanting, you can't do that. Another penalty on the Rams. Very sloppy on this opening drive. First and five 
So, the Rams have been helping out the Knights and trying to answer the score. With two offsides. Zalatowski's so looking to throw. He throws it. Oh! Oh, and it is caught. I cannot see who. Looks like Aiden Honig on the receiving end, and it is. Honig, the leading receiver for the Xavier Knights. Number, 20, number 26, Sean Baptiste, looked to be jumping that route. I thought he was going to catch it. Evidently, no. Should put all my trust in Shane. My apologies. So first down inside the Rams 30. Get it to Gallup. That was like a broken play from the beginning, and it'll be losing yards. It'll be interesting to see how many times Xavier throws the ball, because they are known for their running gun offense. I can't imagine it'd be more than five. I mean, I was 29 attempts on the season over eight games. Zalatowski fakes a handoff. He'll be losing yardage as well. I believe that was Sean Baptiste on the tackle. So it'll be third and long for the Knights, and this is a passing situation. So they might have to look to the air again. Baptiste with six tackles on the season. The Rams scored on the third and long. Let's see if the Knights can at least get a first down on this third and long. Zaltowski running left. He's got a gigantic gap. And it is in for the touchdown. Back to back third and longs. And back to back touchdowns on opening drives. And that's what he's done all season. Shane Zaltowski. Third and team should be part of the offense's plan from now on, apparently. Charlie Kinsey on for the PAT. And it's blocked. And it's so Ford and Prep maintains the lead. Appeared that Will Wood got in there on the block, along with others. Kinsey, a usually solid kicker, made 23 of his 28 attempts this season with PATs. And you can't fault him for that one. I never had a chance to get up. You can hear the Xavier crowd singing the Xavier fight song. So we have two touchdowns, and we're just over eight minutes into the game. So the offenses have come to play. I'm predicting those are not going to be the only touchdowns this game has. Probably we'll see a very high-scoring game today. 
I hope so. It'll be entertaining to commentate and to watch. Here's Benny Luria with the kickoff. Not Charlie English this time receiving it, but it's a, almost an identical kick and almost an identical run bad. He is as one man to beat, and he gets across the 50. Great return. What an outstanding rush by English. It was Jericho and Cheddar on the return. Over a 40-yard return at that. Surprisingly, and Chad, that was his longest run of the season, only amassing eight yards in the regular season. So, Rams will have a short field to work with. And Chad, the motion man here. To hand it off to English on the first play of the drive again. That was, goes a little better than last time. Gets about four yards. It'll be second and six. Moorhead must feel comfortable out of the shotgun. He hasn't lined up on their center yet today. And if it, if he does, I believe those occasions will be few and far between. Moorhead and play action. Back. Moorhead will step That's up. Similar play to the touchdown. And that is it caught. Is. Receiver was not in bounds. It'll be third and six. But third down has been the money down for both sides. It really has. See if we if they can make another magic touchdown on third down. I think they'd just be happy with the first down. A touchdown would be gravy. But let's see if the Knights' defense can be the first to make a stand. Head. Off his back foot, it is caught by Keegan Booty for the first down. He had pressure in his face and delivered a beautiful ball. Judy a Jr., longest, ca longest catch of the season, 11 yards. And around 46 yards per game this season. I believe he just surpassed that with a 12 yard reception. Once again, Anchetta in motion. They hand it off to English on first down again. Looking for blocks. He gets them. Still going. And then about, eight yard, about an eight-yard run on first down. English with a lot of stiff arms like Derrick Henry. So it'll be second and short. You think they'll run play action here? I think they do. I think they will. Not play action, a straight drop back. Moore looking for the end zone. He does have it. Tommy Gee's yet again his second of the game. Another big touchdown by Geese, and it is 13 to 6 Rams. Two touchdowns in the first half. I wish I had him on my fantasy team. 
McGee surprisingly tying his season high of touchdowns just in this first quarter. Showing up in the in the games there it matters, the rivalry. It's Lado's extra point. He's two for two today. Make it 14 to six Rams. His two, two catches are both for touchdowns. He actually had a third catch that, for a touchdown that was wiped out by a holding call. Excuse me, that was Edward Lewis Moore. I apologize. Point still stands. He's found the end zone whenever he's had the ball. Scoop kick, fielded by one of the young men, he'll just go down. I think that was Chris Killen, it was, fielding that kick. So they will start on their own 32. Xavier starts to strive just under two minutes left in the first quarter. Zalatowski will run right yet again. He's got a big hole yet again. Makes a man miss and gets a first down to about the 45 of Xavier. Zalatowski's Zalatowski was a major part in the championship game against Mount St. Michael, where Xavier won 27-22. Five carries for 50 yards and a touchdown today by Zalatowski. That's a nice even stat line. the original line of scrimmage. Evidently must have been a penalty on Fordham yet again. Fordham really need to play uh, a cleaner game. Already like around six penalties today. Evidently. Keeping them in this game. It's Manny Moran, the inside handoff. Keeps his legs churning. He'll be close to the sticks. Marat from France, only his second season playing American football, and he is definitely shown out here at the Xavier A School and maybe get a college scholarship. It would, he did get the first down. single wing shift. And there's another flag. Once again, jumping off sides. Offside. Ford and Prep with a surprising number of penalties today. It's their fourth offsides. The 
Zalatovsky will run right. Nearly the same play that got him the touchdown. He'll take it in the red zone. Loses the ball. Goes out of bounds. Takes a Xavier bounce. With 120 yards per game, Zalatowski, that is a rare fumble from him. Even when he loses them, he gets them back. So in the red zone, where's Scott Hanson when you need him? This time it's Mara on the direct snap. He gets met at the line, but he'll keep the legs churning, pushing the pile in the rugby scrum. He'll be down inside the 10. Moran Zalatowski in a long line of good Xavier running backs. And it's first and goal. And Xavier has been energized by this crowd and they're gonna try and get right back in this game. Whistles, and the first quarter has come to a close. 14 to six, the Rams, but Xavier knocking on the door trying to get right back in this, in this one. If this first quarter has shown us anything, it will be a very tight and high scoring game, and I'm very excited to see it. I, can, I agree. Welcome back, start of the second quarter. First and goal from the six for the Knights. They're gonna score their second touchdown and possibly tie it up. It's Alatovsky again, running right again, looking for blocks there, not there. He'll lose yardage on the play. Back it around this t the 10 yard line. This Fordham Prep defense is not one to mess with. They have been there every game of the season. Amassing a season total of 408 tackles. So back him up three yards, it'll be second and go. It's Marah this time, trying to take it straight up the gut, looking for blocks, keeping the legs churning, and he'll take it to the five, and it'll be third and goal. Excuse me, the four yard line. Let's see if Marah can back up this historic season that he had with an outstanding performance in this turkey bowl. If he keeps the power running like that, he will be. Third and goal from the four. Possible four down territory. Oh, 
It's Zalatovsky trying to lunge forward. And it'll be fourth down. And they're going to go for it. From the three. And Coach Stevens is leaving the offense on the field. Not surprising for Xavier, who have been very good in the red zone this season. Timeout, believe Fordham Prep. So both teams have time to think over this decision, and Coach Stevens is sticking with his guns. He's going for it. A long two yards to get into the end zone. Could Xavier switch it up here and go for a pass? I think they stick with the power football. They do. It's Marat. Power back, Marat. And he's in. Touchdown, Xavier. The gutsy call. Works out. Another touchdown for Z the Xavier Knights. The 36th of the season. Here's the offense. He's staying on the field to try and tie this thing up right away. Would you would you do this or would you? I would it? be safe and keep the football, but Moran, the duo of Moran Zalatovsky. And it is Zalatovsky looking for blocks. He's going nowhere. And at it, Fordham maintains a slim lead. I'm surprised that he went for it there. I thought he was gonna stay safe and go for the extra point, but nevertheless, the Xavier Knights are only down by two. I agree, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with the call. I mean, you just got two yards for, on fourth down for the touchdown, why not try and do it again? It's just a matter of math if you don't get it, because now Fordham scores a touchdown and kicks a PAT, you're down two possessions. Kick is up, and it is away. Charlie English again, this time. Se ne ne nearly the same exact return strategy. Excuse me, that's not Charlie English. 
Loria, the kicker, also plays soccer for the Xavier Knights. Jack McKillop, that makes sense. They do that even in college. There's a flag on the play. Either that or the referee just dropped it, but I saw a yellow fly. Fordham offensive line is signaling the offense to back up, so another penalty on Fordham. Most likely. And it is. It'll back him up. 15. So that wipes out a really good kick return. Xavier needed that desperately. Now having a chance to get back on offense and score one more touchdown or maybe even a field goal before halftime. I believe that's the sixth penalty of the game on the Rams already and we're not even 15 minutes in. From his own 22, he hands it off to Charlie English. And he's going nowhere. Great play by Evan Tarosi, the sophomore. He'll lose a yard. So on second and 12, in all likelihood to pass. Moore at a low left this time. He's in trouble. He gets it away to an open man, and he's got a first down. He gets crunched, so he pays the price. It's Jericho Anchetta picking up 11 on the first down. only had one touchdown on the season and 109 yards. So fresh set of downs, they hand it off to English again. So Xavier's been able to stop the run evidently, this drive, holding him to only two. You can hear the Xavier sideline yelling that they want Ram Chops. They've been able to focus on the run lately, at least this drive. Will they be able to stop the pass? Moorhead only has two incompletions this game. One, the receiver not being able to keep his feet in bounds. Moore to roll right this time. Last time, now he does it, he's in trouble, he just throws it away. Did that reach the line of scrimmage? Oh, he's out of the pocket, so it doesn't matter, excuse me. But it'll be third down. Surprising for the junior with, who had a thousand, yard a thousand yard passing season. The 583 completion percentage. That just dropped down a tiny bit. Fordham three for three on third down today. There's a flag on the play, it was picked up. Third and eight. Head of the motion man. More on a straight drop back. Pressure up the middle. He gets it away. And it's caught. I cannot see by who. I apologize. But that's Keegan Duty. 
and he's got another first down. Complete to duty. Another outstanding, another outstanding play. Only, even though he only amassed the longest, his catch this season was 11 yards. So in Xavier territory, they hand it off. That's not Charlie English, and he's making men miss. It's Jack McKillop, the sophomore. Evidently shifty from that run. Gets about four or five. It's only a three yard gain, I'm sorry. Has two backs in the backfield yet again. This time it's play action. He checks it down to one of them. It's McKillop again. He's got a first down. Keeps the legs churning, gets to about the 30. There's a flag on the play. McKillop, the sophomore, will have two more years left to play in this turkey bowl. Already showing what he's made of today. Unfortunately for, for McKillop, this play will not count. More penalties on the rims. So a holding call wipes out that first down. It goes from first and ten on the Xavier 30. There is another flag near the Fordham sideline. Looks like it's up to nine flags now. Listen, whatever it is, it's too many for the first half. Very sloppy showing by Fordham today. That flag will be picked up though. Only one back in the backfield this time. It's a pass from Moorhead. Has time. Delivers over the middle into a tight window. It's Edward Lewis Moore for a gain of about 13. Moore, the leading receiver of the season, having four touchdowns. Can he score another one on this drive? Moorhead rolls right, throws left, over the middle, caught by Keegan Duty, making men miss, and he'll be down inside the 25. Boy, he fit that into a tight window. And he got a lot of yards after the catch. Duty has already three good catches today, only averaging 12 and 12.7 of the season. Well, he's over that today. Yeah. 12 is his, well, you said his uh, longest reception was 11. He's got 12, ones of 12, 16, and 21 today. Two backs in the backfield again. They hand it off to one of them, which is Charlie English. Trying to bounce it outside. He does, and it'll be close to a first down. You cannot tell whether they'll give it to him. They will. English is just too good. It'd be
be interesting to see what he could do in the Xavier backfield. Xavier already has three good running backs, but what's another one? So back to back first downs. Ward will throw, try and throw this time. He's rolling right. He just throws off his back foot. Corner of the end zone. It's caught by Jericho Anchella. Moorhead's third touchdown of the half. And the Rams offense is clicking. And Chetta's first touchdown of the season. <laughs> Why not do it in the Turkey Bowl? Easily his longest of the catch of the season. PAT is good. So make it 21 to 12 Rams. A palindromic score, if you will. Xavier's now down two scores. See if they can get one more touchdown before halftime to make it a little bit closer. Four minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. Xavier drives are taking 422 and 418 respectively. So, have to trim down around that by just a little bit if they want points before halftime. Compared to last year's Fordham blowout of Xavier, this game seems a lot closer and will be a lot interesting, more interesting in the second half. It's so far, it's really going to be a matter of which defense uh, steps up first because five drives, five touchdowns. Matthew Otto boots it, field it about the ten yard line, waiting for blocks to set up. Maybe Xavier can get a big kick return here, and they will, all the way across the forty to about midfield. I believe that's Gavin Gallagher to the 49-yard line. So Xavier with a big special teams play of their own. Gallagher, the third leading rusher. On most, on most teams, he would be first. Usually they talk about a two-headed monster in the backfield. Xavier has a three-headed monster. Yeah. Zalatowski, Moran, Gallagher amassed a big part of Xavier's 2,689 yards this season. They get it to Gallagher again. He's trying to bounce it to the outside. He'll get three yards. Xavier can, if Fordham Prep can win today, they will lead the series 53 to 41 over 99 contests. Listen, all I need to know that this is a real rivalry is that the first game ended in a 0 0 tie called the Darkness. That shows how historical and how long, far back this rivalry dates. Spin move by Murata, fake out some Fordham defenders, and he'll fall forward to about the 44-yard line. It'll be third, and a long third and three. When Marat acts as the quarterback, he only has one attempt, but at a QB rating of 39. Must be why he sticks to running the ball. Yeah. Mariah again with the direct snap. He'll get the first down. Stays upright. 
and whistles blow, he's down to 38 of Fordham Prep. So a gain of six. So three runs on this drive, and not a single one feature change out Zalatovsky. A little odd, but he's been on the field. You can so. easily think Medi will be the leading rusher of not only Xavier, but also of the league next season. Zalatovsky spins. He's looking to throw. Floats it, nearly intercepted, and it'll fall harmlessly to the turf. That was a dangerous pass. Zalatoski, four interceptions along the season. Thankfully, that was not one of them. So it'll be second and 10 from the Fordham 38. They get it to Gallagher this time, and he'll be spun forward for about two. It'll be third and long. This third down magic can it be carried in to this drive by Xavier. I wonder if the one that's right side sweep with uh, Zalatovsky again. It's already three touchdowns on third down. And one on fourth. So we'll see. Zalatovsky's looking to throw. Zalatovsky floats one incomplete. So it'll be fourth and eight. And I would believe we'd see our first punt of the game. This is, if you're Fordham Prep, this is where you try to come out and score one more touchdown to put you up three and get a major advantage going to halftime. If that, if they were to score a touchdown, Xavier is called timeout. If they score another touchdown, would you go? Would you go for two and try and go up three possessions? I would. I think so, but. It'd be interesting to see how Xavier, how Fordham Prep would place their defense to counter the two-point attempt. I mean, they haven't been able to stop the offense, so I don't see why not. Also, 29 to 12. I don't know if that's a scoregami in the uh, CHSFL, but I know it'll be one in the NFL. That would mean a score of the second half, though, and that wouldn't be entertaining. Over the years, Fordham Prep has amassed an outstanding 1,672 points compared to Xavier's 1,435 points. Xavier's biggest win coming 60 to 6 in 1960. Jeez. So all Xavier has to do to even this up is win by 200 is what you're telling me. Xavier on fourth. They're leaving the offense out there. So I would assume because there are no men's line. Trying to get another flag. Offsides and they do it perfectly. The hard count works to perfection. It's another offsides on Fordham. I believe that's their fifth of the day. And tenth penalty this game. It's keeping Xavier in the game. So you go from a fourth and seven to a fourth and two. Easily the most penalties Xavier's seen this season in one half. Zalatovsky will run left side this time. Looking for blocks to set up. It'll be close to a first down. There's a flag down. And he's got the first down, but I think that might be coming back.
So you go from 4th and 7 to 4th and 2 to 4th and 12. And the offense is still on the field. Very surprising call by Coach Stevens. Is he trying to get another hard count? I mean, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. They're running a play. Mirage looking to throw. He floats a wobbler and it'll fall to the turf. Charlie English tried to pick that off. It's honestly a blessing in disguise he didn't. Would have been an arm punt. The first turnover of the game for, for, for Xavier or Fordham. Now can Fordham capitalize with So you went 0 for 3 passing that drive. So we've gotten up to four passing attempts for the Knights. Here's Moorhead. Checks it down to Charlie English. He's got room. He's got a first down, and he stepped out somewhere around the 45-yard line. 27 seconds left. I think they might be able to get one play left, one play off, call a quick timeout, call one more play before the end of the half. Stepped out a little before the 45 at the 47, but it'll still move the chains. Put Sanchetta in motion. He just hands it off to English. And he'll fall forward for about two. And I would assume Fordham Prep has just called their second timeout. Their second timeout. There's 21 seconds left on the clock. Maybe one more play and then heave it up for one Hail Mary. Well, they have a timeout, so you don't have to work the sidelines here. If you get a if you get a reception, get out of bounds and keep your timeout. Obviously, that's a golden scenario. In New York State, both of these teams are very evenly ranked. One, uh, New York Fordham Prep ranked 108 and Xavier ranked 110. Here's Moorhead. As a rush coming after him, he's hit as he throws, he floats it up, Charlie English has the catch, and he's in the secondary, is he going to take it to the end zone, he won't, he'll be just, oh no, he, uh, yes he will, be short, at about the three, there's two sec, oh no, 12 seconds left on the clock, so now you can go for six, and not play for the field goal, what a play by Charlie English, talking about him all of the first half, can he easily get one more touchdown to put the, his total up to 12, 13 on the season? They do. They had to use their final time out of the half. Is there? They called. They called. So a 42-yard gain there. Three plays on this drive, all have gone into the hands of Charlie English. Two receptions, one run. It just shows how much English really means to this team and how much Fordham is going to lose it at the end of this year.
next year, Florida will probably hand over the keys to the kingdom to either McKillop or Lee, both juniors, and one junior and one sophomore. <laughs> Xavier's sideline banging the drums. The fans behind the sideline. I feel like I'm in Oakland with the athletics. Moret will throw. Deep drop wide open. Keegan Duty all by himself in the end zone for the touchdown. His second touchdown of the season. Surprisingly, duty has come through for Fordham here today. With seven seconds left in the half. Moritz, fourth touchdown pass of the half. He'll easily be getting looks at for MVP nods for this game. And the PAT is good. So make it 28 to 12 going into the half. Barring a Hail Mary from Xavier. More like a run Mary if they can get off the ball in time. One would think Matthew Moore had a junior playing a senior game be very tough, but he is passing this test with flying colors. Moorhead, easily the player of the game so far. And there's another, another good squid. kick. Fielded by Zalatowski, just, could just go down. Instead, he might break this. Has one, oh, he had one man to beat. That would have been, been an exciting end to the half. Alas, he gets tackled at the 45, and that'll take us to the locker room. We'll see you after halftime. The score, 28 Fordham, 12 Xavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JV? Yeah, I'm a Alright, man, good stuff. Appreciate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why are you calling me? We're good to go. So, 
I'm at the number with the Night Vision Network, and I'm here with assistant coach uh, Howell. Hey guys, RJ Hopper, the offensive coordinator of Fordham Prep. I didn't get your name. What's your name? Oh, uh, Anthony Number. Anthony Number. Oh, so, uh, so in the first half, you guys are up. Uh, what has been working with you? So we had a great week of practice. I think um, you know that's played a big role in why we were able to execute, and I think we've had some success with the running game, and found some good matchups for us in the passing game. Uh, so we still got another half to play. What do you guys want to improve in the second half? So I think we need to clean up some things on the defensive side. Uh, we're going to go into the locker room, take a look at the film, see what we can clean up. You know, as you know, Xavier's a great football team, a lot of tough young men, very hardworking. Um, and you got a unique offense, and you really got, you execute at a high level. So it presents a lot of challenges for us. Offensively, too, I think there's a few things uh, on our assignments we need to clarify, and hopefully we can get that squared away. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right, one more thing. Got it. Is that it? We're done here? And I just want to give a shout out to my fiance, Melissa, who's homesick with the flu. Love you, babe. I'll see you later. Got it. Happy Thanksgiving.
So I'm Anthony Nemer with the Knights Vision Network, and I'm here with Xavier Knights defensive coordinator Don DeFalco. Uh, what are your takeaways of the first half? Well, we're not play, uh, we're not covering particularly well for the most part. Stop on the run, which is nice. We're in position. We need to make the pl make plays on the ball a little bit. And uh, what do you want to improve in the second half? Just come up with a stop. Score here. Come up with a stop. Game changes after that. Thank you. Fans, if I could get attention, if I could get your attention to midfield, the new kicker six, headmaster of Xavier, is standing with Dr. Joseph Testiello, principal of Florida Prep, where the team shall announce the final results of the seventh annual Turkey Bowl Challenge, in which Florida Prep defeated Xavier. 350 points to 290 points. So now, Ms. Smith will congratulate Dr. Petriello on Florida Prep's success. Also, in honor of the 175th anniversary of the founding of Xavier High School, the Florida Prep community thought it appropriate to offer a gift to our beloved rivals to remind us all that ties us and finds these two great institutions. Which runs deeper than the rivalry that makes this game such a time-honored tradition. And that should Xavier ever find itself in need, Porter Prep will be there to heed their brother's call. On with the glory, Sons of Xavier.
and we welcome you back to the second half of the 99th annual Turkey Bowl. Fordham Prep leads Xavier 28 to 12 at halftime. And what do you think are the keys for Xavier to get back in this game? I really think uh, Zalatowski needs to break some more tackles. Uh, I think Xavier's defense needs to maintain their strong abilities that they have had throughout the entire season. And I really think they just they need to have a little more like energy, I guess. First, first half, Xavier's offense put up points for them prep, although marched down the field four, four drives, four touchdowns, including one with seven seconds left in the half. But Xavier will receive the ball to start the second half, so maybe they can do something with that. And that's smart. They deferred it to the second half so they could get it if they were down. And they really need the, the points right now. Winston Otto, the junior kicker, will get a starter in the second half. First half ended with a kickoff that almost got taken back to the house by Zalatowski. Second half kickoff, also a squib. Fielded this time by Gavin Gallagher. And it'll be taken down just short of the 40 yard line at about his own 38. I don't really know why they did that, just to give Xavier a better field position, but I suppose they thought one of the up men would fall on it, but it did take a bounce over the line of up men and to the returners. In the end, a good start for Xavier in the second half. So the Knights start at their own 37, it's Zalatowski, he'll cut it back up the middle, and he's going nowhere. Maybe lost a couple. It's not a great first play out of, out of the locker room. So it'll be a second and 10 after the run for no gain. They do the shift and Fordham. They did snap it and they lost yards. I thought that would be blown dead for movement either way, but evidently they did snap it in the season. Fordham defense the with movement. 408 total tackles on the season. Not, none for loss, surprisingly. Until now, minus four on the fly. Whistles. Looks like something is happening on the field right now. Is there an injury? Or, inj or an injection. Referees were talking to number 66, Daniel Edwards. So third and 14. 
after a bit of a stoppage. Wonder if they throw here. They do. Saltovsky will be right. right. Off his back foot, he floats it to Gallagher. He's got a first down. And he's out of bounds at about the 40. Huge play, Xavier needed it and they got it. What a play by Zalatowski for someone who doesn't pass that often. Xavier so is up to five passing attempts this game. They're two for five. A great play to start the second half. Gain of 28. Can I, wait, can I do Zalatovsky will run it this time. Looking to shed some tackles and get some blocks. Oh, he's just carrying men with him down inside the 20. So back-to-back -back huge plays. What a run by Zalatovsky. I don't know what else to say now. There's so much that we've already said about him. You, you said he needed to break more tackles. He broke about four on that play. Back-to-back -back gains of over 20 yards, and the Xavier offense is in the red zone. Will it be Zalatovsky's ball for a third straight play? No, it's Mara trying to take it straight up the middle, and he'll get about a yard, if that. He does, exactly one yard. Mirage Long is 62. They do the shift, and they had another more movement on Fordham, and another flag. Michael, Sempre, Michael Sempreviva, the senior out of Port Chester, jumping on that play. Their 12th or 13th flag of the contest. So second and nine to second and four for a running offense is a big difference. This is really where you're gonna see Xavier's offense come in clutch. Zalatovsky will run left. And he makes up for the offsides penalty by bringing him down from behind. It's Semper Vivo again, on the ta this time on the tackle. Not being flagged on the play. So he gets back to the line. Third and four from the 12. Anthony DeBow, the senior, is coming on. I think even if you don't get yards here, this could be four down territory. Whistles and a timeout for Xavier. They've already expired much of the game clock. Over four minutes into the half on the opening drive, you're right. They need to speed it up a little bit. Maybe get one more touchdown and then it'll make for a much greater contest going into the middle of the fourth and middle of the third and end of the fourth quarter. Well, if Xavier scores here, that'll give them the momentum they need, especially if they go for two and make this a one possession and get it and make this a one possession game.
big third and four coming up. They need the eight for a first down. It'll be Zalatovsky on the left side run. Trying to cut it back, it'll be very close. But I think it will be a, about a yard short. Around two yards less than his average carry, 6.7 yards. Fourth and two. Once again, Xavier offense staying on the field. Question will be, can Xavier punch it in here? I think they try and shift and get an offsides penalty. Yep. They're very disciplined though this time. Fordham knows what's gonna hit them. Will you do a second shift? You do. And there you go. They give him the first down. If Xavier comes comes back to win this game, it'll all be Fordham will be talking about their their multiple flags this game. Their very sloppy game today. I don't think Coach Stevens had any intention of running an actual play there. So first and goal from the five. Zalatovsky will take it. Oh, he gets upended. He got back to the line. But a good job of interior pressure from the Fordham D line. Well, only going four and six overall, this Fordham prep defense has really held the Knights in check to, so far today. Yeah, Knights in check. I see what you did there. Zalatowski will hand it inside to Gallagher. Trying to get in the end zone. He will. Touchdown, Knights. Gallagher, the senior. His 10th touchdown. Putting into double digits. So, Xavier marched down the field and do what they have to do to keep it, stay in this game. They take over six, they take over six minutes off the clock though, or over five minutes, excuse me. A very interesting call by Coach Stevens going for it here. Makes sense, if you get it, you're only down one possession. But if they miss it, they're still down two. Marat, the power back, and trying to push the pile, and no signal yet. Does the Xavier rugby come in handy? And it is denied it's not by the forum prep defense. That entering defense always on the loose. So 0 for 3 on PATs, whether that be two point attempts or kicks. So a huge blow that keeps us a two possession game. And the Xavier defense will have to make a stand. And it looks like Mara is injured coming off the field, limping a little bit. That is not a good sign for the Xavier defense. I think Xavier offense. I think they'll try and power through. But Xavier still down two scores. Twenty-eight to eighteen. Both teams have already outscored their total from last year's Turkey Bowl. which had the 27 to 13 Fordham prep win. Benny Loria boots this one, it's a low line drive fielded by 
and Chetta trying to cut it and back. back. Stiff arms Donahue trying to cut it back and it'll be taken out of bounds at the 49 of Fordham Prep. That was it. And Chetta's about a 30 yard return there. And Chetty's first ever kick kickoff return. It was right down at the 47. It's not Surprising for someone who's never not completed very, a kickoff before. Not a very generous spot. Two backs in the backfield this time. They hand it to this, the sophomore back. And they'll get about two before the Xavier Knights converge on him. Excuse me, that's not the sophomore back. That's a junior back, Benjamin Lee. Fordham Prep has had great starting field position all game though, except for one drive when they started on their own 22. But even so, that kickoff was returned to their own 37 and they got 15 yards taken away from them on a penalty. Even though Xavier's offense is based solely on the rushing attack, it's surprising to see how well the Fordham Prep rushers actually are especially Charlie English and Benjamin Lee. There's a completion of Edward Lewis Moore, close to a first down. It'll be third and a, third and a foot. Oh no, they'll move the chains. De delayed movement that put up the three on the down marker across the field. Moorhead will throw again. They it is he throws. He gets Charlie English with blocking downfield, and he's out of bounds inside the 20. Flags are down. More flags by Ford and Pratt. Looks Pratt. like they're bring, calling it back. Holding, but downfield holding. So, a first and three. This Fordham Prep offense is warming up. A food analogy, almost warm and brown. On Thanksgiving, really? Yeah. And Chet of the Motion Man will block. Moore does all day. He's looking to step up and throw deep down the field. Off the hands of Keegan Duty. That was Robert Allen in coverage, along with Benny Loria. Duty, the surprising, the surprising player of this game so far. Already has two touchdowns on the game. Can he make it a third? Just Moorhead's 
fourth incompletion of the game. Ocean Man and Cheddar, they hand it off to Charlie English. He's trying to cut it back, and it's not going to work. That's Xavier defense. John Radigan and Marquis St. Cyrus in there on the tackle. John Radigan, one of the early plays of the game for him. So, even with the holding penalty, you have a first and three, and it goes from a first and three to a third and four. And a long four at that. Can the Xavier defense make a stand? The clock time is Gies in motion. He's looking ELM's way the whole time and it's broken up. That almost looked like an interception. Fordham Prep looking for a flag. There is none. And it'll be fourth down. The Xavier defense is just too compact. The first fourth down of the game for the Rams. And it looks like Fordham Prep coach Pat Dean is leaving the offense out there. No real risks when you go with fourth down here. Fourth and less than five. Xavier got a hard count to work against Fordham Prep deep in their own territory. You're already up by 10. I wonder if Fordham Prep will do the same thing if they're actually running a play. And shut to the motion man. Whistles and a flag. And, f and the fourth and four is going to turn into fourth and nine. I think now you got to kick it. Yeah. So Ford and Prep D-line has committed a lot of penalties this game. This is the one on the O-line. Fourth and nine, the offense is still on the field. Monstrous play trying to get and determine this, the outcome of this game, and a timeout. And I believe that was just a hard count. So each team's burned a timeout in the third quarter. And now it appears the punting unit is coming on. Yeah. First punt of the game by either team. It's a left footed punt. Obscure. That is going to be touched by Fordham. Down inside the 20 of Xavier. But I believe it was batted before then. Yes, it was touched at the 20, 21 and a half of Xavier. So Xavier's defense has given the offense a chance. Can they capitalize? It'll be interesting to see how many pa how many runs go to Zalatowski and how many runs go to Marat. This one 
to Zalatovsky, I believe, for about three or four. This time it's Marat trying to take a oh. straight at the middle, and he will be about two yards short of a first down. And Aiden Honig is looking for a face mask call after the play. He won't get it. Number 25, Josiah Moore putting his hands up. And they are just trying to run the clock out. Only four, 48 seconds left. Likely one more play before the end of the quarter. Probably one more play. And it's a third and one. Zalatovsky, I believe, has the ball. It's hard to see in that scrum. I apologize. But whoever has the ball has the first down to about the 35. Xavier needs this a score here badly. Leave the run. They're, they are running another play before the end of the quarter. They didn't have to. And it's an outside handoff to Gallagher. And he is met at the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward for a couple. That's James Rice on the tackle. Gallagher's longest, 85 yards and 100 plus. Four times 100 plus. And with that, we go to the fourth quarter. We welcome you back. We welcome you back. It's 28 to 18 Fordham Prep. Xavier with the ball though. One first down already on this drive. They shift. Will they shift again? On second down, I doubt it. No, they don't. They get it to Zalatovsky, trying to sweep the right side. He Just is dragging men with him across midfield for a first down. A 13-yard run to open up the fourth. Zalatowski has that muscle to get the first down. First play of the drive in Rams territory. And they Another shift, shift again. Zalatovsky up the middle, trying to push the pile. We'll get a yard, if that. I think if Xavier wins this game, Zalatovsky will be the MVP. I concur. If Fordham wins, there's there's numerous people that could get the MVP. Moorhead, English, and Keegan Duty are all up candidates for winning 
the most valuable player, the President's Trophy. The fourth quarter, though, is usually when things like that are finally decided. Sweep to Gallagher, looking for blocks. And he's going to stay on his feet and get close to a first down. Bring up third and about two or three. So definitely, definitely four down territory here, I would assume. But all that might not matter if Sabre's able to get two yards on this next play. Whistles. Timeout, Xavier. Timeout. Timeout, Xavier. Xavier needs a break from that almost heart pounding first couple of plays of this fourth quarter. Coming out of the timeout, third and two. Maybe another shift to try and give him a first down. They just run the play, and it's Zalatovsky will have a first down and trying to push for extra yards. And Fordham has the ball. Fordham has come away with the football. It's a matter of if whistles blew first, and I think they'll say they did. Number 20, Sean Rooney. Came away with the pigskin, but Xavier will retain possession with a fresh set of bounds. They pitch it to Gallagher, and it'll be dragged down for a gain of about a yard or two. As we dip under nine minutes to go in the game. Gallagher can pad his stats here a little more with this excellent performance today. But for the Fordham Prep defense right now, the clock is turning into their friend as they're up two scores. With under 8.30 to go in the game. Gallagher again. Gets a great block from Marat. Gallagher. Gavin Gallagher will take this one to the house. And this is a one score game. And Xavier's right back in the game, just like we expected. And what a performance by Gavin Gallagher, his second touchdown of the game. We said the clock was turning into uh, the, Z the Fordham Prep defense's friend. Not anymore. What a performance by Gavin Gallagher. Charlie Kinsey on for the PAT. He gets this one up, and he gets it through. And this is a three-point game, ladies and gentlemen.
with 8.06 to go. Xavier definitely now needs to use their timeouts very sparingly. And the tension on that Fordham Prep sideline now has to be palpable. Xavier had a great season all season. Let's see if they can come back and go seven and two overall. If they're able to turn back the clock a couple years. And win the Turkey Bowl for the first time since 2019 when they won 40 to 14. Fordham Prep will begin with not ideal field position. Inside their own 20. Whatever we have. Are they picking up the flag? What? I'm not sure what's happening, why they're moving the ball. Unless there was a flag on the defense or on the Xavier sideline. There's line. something happening on the field right now. Free kick out of bounds? OK. They're calling that a free kick out of bounds. And whistles again. So finally ready to start this drive. And it's a handoff to Charlie English. Trying to bounce it outside. He English. does. He's got a first down. Oh, and loses the ball, but he's out of bounds. And he takes it across the Xavier side of midfield. Out of bounds at the Xavier 45. We've been talking about English all game. And just another outstanding rush from Charlie English. <laughs> This time, English, the lone running back in the back, backfield. Tight formation, all the receivers inside the numbers. Bullhead on a pitch, and that's going nowhere. Sean Donahue with a big tackle. Loss of two on the play for Charlie English. His 61st tackle of the season, Sean Donahue. Easily up for consideration for double A player, defensive player of the year. Second down and 12, crowd chanting defense. The crowd is electric here right now. 
Ingram will roll right. He gets a block. Throws. Incomplete. And it'll be third and 12. Here's that third down monster again. Can Fordham Prep come up and deliver? Or will Xavier get back the ball with seven minutes left to try and take the lead or even just tie up the game? The Xavier fans are very rowdy right now. Huge, huge third down for both sides. Mohead gets the snap, throws near side, fourth down. Just out of the reach of Keegan Duty. Fourth and 12. Great stop from Xavier on third down. Coach Stevens pumped up after the play. Very excited to get his team back on offense. And the punting unit likely coming on, and it is. Tomas Diaz back deep. Punt is away. away. Fair catch called for at about the 19 of Xavier. Eight. There is a flag, however. Is it a holding call? It's a going against Ford. Ooh, might be offsetting because he's pointed in both directions. I'm just going to wait for the referee to make the signal. Stop trying to guess. Personal foul on Fordham Prep. So that'll move the Knights up. Fifteen yards. Or just ten. Taking the offense off and putting the defense back on. So the Rams are repunted and take the yards. Not sure how much difference this will make. away. Oh. oh! And that might be a mental error. On Benny Lurie and his Fordham Prep book football. 
the Fulham Prep sideline is going oh, insane right now. Now, it was misjudged by Xavier, and Fordham Prep is being put in excellent field position to get one more score. And that's a game changer. Tomas Diaz trying to plead his case, but it's of no avail. An absolute backbreaker and a gift for Fordham Prep, a backbreaker for Xavier. Xavier could really use an interception right here. Even if they hold him to three here, it's not the end of the world. They cannot go down two scores at this stage of the game. Moorhead's thrown five interceptions this season. This game he's got four touchdowns and no picks. It's a handoff. It's a run. Trying to bounce it outside is the sophomore running back, Jack McKillop, and he does. He'll be near the sticks. And it'll be second and a foot. Like we said before, if the penalties cost for and prep the game, that muffed punt might have cost Xavier the game. Second and very short. They may just run play action here. They don't. It's a straight throw. Moorhead throws across the field. Caught for the touchdown. Jericho Ancella, his second of the game, ripping out of the hands of Tomas Diaz. And this is once again a two possession game. His third touchdown. Second? Mm -hmm. Second touchdown of the game. Putting him up there for MVP contention. And. This PFP is blocked, so it'll be a nine-point lead. Squib kick. And out of bounds. Fortunate for Xavier as that bounced off another Xavier player's hands. Bounces out at the 34. I Almost looking like a Fordham prep recovery from a fumble. But thanks for Xavier, it went out of bounds. So 32 on their own 32. Just under seven minutes to play. Now down two scores.
Mara has shown out even with a major injury to his to his ankle. Sweep it to Gallagher again, trying to cut it back, and he does. And he'll fall forward for about three. And the Xavier sideline indicating to pick up the pace as they're down two scores and have only one timeout. Gallagher again. Lost the ball. And it's Rams football yet again. Another fumble reception. Oh, that was a flag. flag. So back-breaking fumbles for the Xavier Knights in this fourth quarter. Although the penalty will move Ford and Prep back. But up two scores. I have a feeling Ford and Prep is going to try and eat time off the clock. In a sense, Goliath, I mean David, sorry, David almost beat Goliath as Fordham Prep was the four overall seed and went four and six in the regular season, while Xavier, even though a league down, went six and two with a four and oh record in their league. First time Moorhead will line up under center all day. This doesn't indicate a run. I don't know what will. They get it to English. Straight up the middle. Into the, into the second level. Flag, flag is thrown flag. Wow. after the play. Incredible amount of flags thrown today. After a gain of roughly four. After the play, so I would assume extracurricular activities and Fordham's offense is moving backward and now it doesn't look good it looks mostly bleak for the Xavier Knights Fordham might just cruise to the victory now and the Xavier sideline trying to can't chant that you can't do that but not as loud, I've noticed. So the personal foul moves the Rams back to their own 40. The Rams once again on their center. It's a pitch this time to the outside. That's going nowhere, but he stays in bounds, keeps the clock running, and gains about a yard and a half. We bleed under five minutes to go, and the Rams offense in no rush. Yeah. 
So, if you had to pick the MVP of this game, should the score hold, barring anything, who would, who would you give it to? Because I have my answer. I think it has to be Moorhead. He's thrown five touchdowns so far today. There's just nothing else you can do, really, as an MVP other than just be great, and I think Moorhead was the best player today. I agree. Jericho and Chetta made a couple men miss, got to about midfield, and made this a third and manageable for the Ford and Prep Rams. Moorhead scoring 10, se 10 touchdowns this season, having that th just in a single game, very incredible achievement for him. Excuse me, this was... That was third down, it's now fourth. Zalatowski this time, back deep. Xavier needs a nice play from Zalatowski here to get back into this game. They have two men deep. Neither of them Diaz, I notice. There's a flag down. And it's a delay of game. Zalatowski will take it to his own 30. A very good punt. As he had to field it all the way back at about his own 18. If this final result comes to fruition, it will be a major turnaround for the Fordham Prep Rams. Coming off a loss in the semifinals to Holy Cross, 28 to seven. Three minutes on the dot left in the game. Xavier needs to go the length of the field. Well, not the length, excuse me. They need to score points of any kind here and likely recover an onside kick. One would think maybe not this play, but eventually you have to see the Xavier offense throw the ball. They're going to throw the ball here. Floats one. in the double coverage. What a catch by Aiden Honig. 20 yards. Honig, the leading receiver of the team. 89 yards this season. And they his take longest, the pace. His longest 38. That was around 38 yards. Zalatowski this time a run. Trying to have block set up of any kind. Nothing doing. He'll lose a yard. One would assume pass here. It is. It is. Zalatowski floats one up. Bat it up and intercepted. And that should do it. Number 22, Charlie English. At his strong safety position that time. Now maybe Charlie English might get MVP after scoring three touchdowns and getting the game-winning interception. An incredible achievement by Charlie. So the comeback attempt will fall short for the Knights.
A first down here would officially end the game. Ward once again under center. They hand it off for no gain. So as this Xavier football season in 2022 comes to a close, it'll end, well, it'll end with a bittersweet taste in their mouths. They won the championship beating Mount St. Michael. However, Turkey Bowl, they suffered a defeat at the hands of Fordham Prep for the second straight year. Yeah, it will be a very tough and long offseason for Coach Stevens as he tries to regain his dominance as Turkey Bowl champion. Have not, having not won it since 2019. One more play and it looks like it's going to be over. Under center. This time it's a pitch. Charlie English trying to make something happen. Gets about three. And they're just running the clock out. It will be third down and eight. Same exact formation. Pitch to the right side this time. That's a first down. That's a touchdown. That'll ice the game. An exclamation point for Charlie English. What a game he's had. Incredible. Incredible by English. What a performance. Now he might get MVP. English overall outstanding today. By far very disappointing for the Xavier Knights. Even though they won a championship, this was the really the championship they wanted to win. The final score won't be as telling as it was 28 to 25 at one point. Now 40 to 25, 41 pending the extra point. And the Florida Prep fans are getting on their feet. They're very happy that their side is victorious and they will have a very happy Thanksgiving. High snap is put down, whistles after, but the PAT was good. So the Xavier offense will take the field, barring a Fordham prep recovery of this kickoff for the final time this season. 
And for all of those seniors, Zalatowski, Gallagher, Honig. Oh, gee, I could go on. The bow. Like I, like Just I a said. disappointing end to their Xavier football career. They can't be too mad. Five days ago, they did win the championship. Admittedly, the rivalry matters more to, most, to some of them, at least. But like I said, bittersweet to go out this way. Kickoff will go all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And they're probably just going to kneel now to end the game, to end the season for the Knights. Crushing defeat. But there's always hope for next year as Mehdi Murat will take the reins of this Xavier backfield. They don't have this trophy to defend, but they do have uh, the actual league championship to defend next year. Likely the final play of the game, if not the second to last. A shift for old time's sake. Get it to Zalatowski. The one left, and it's a fumble. He fumbled again. It's recovered by Fordham. Recovered by Fordham Prep. That's been the name of the game this fourth quarter. Xavier, a sloppy performance at the end. Three fumbles in the fourth quarter. This one not as backbreaking as the first two. And it looks like they're bringing the rest of the seniors on to have one final play. Victory formation. And that is it. That'll wrap things up here at Aviator. The final score, Fordham Prep 41, Xavier 25. The handshakes. Post game, and it was a pleasure calling this game. It was a pleasure having everybody listen. Once again, final score 41 Fordham Prep versus Xavier 25. We'll be right back for the MVP and trophy presentation.
Congratulations to both teams on a very well-played day, as well as excellent 